Yeah, so the 60 and the 60, both capture change segments are used for more severe zonular dialysis. You know, and that's really the measurement of zonular support. This can be based on the quantification of the dialysis, so usually more than four or five clock hours, and or the amount of phacodinesis, so both, you know, quantitative dialysis and more qualitative assessments of zonular strength. So a lens, for example, that's jiggling everywhere, even though there may not be identifiable dialysis, would probably not be sufficient for a non-sutured element, like a CTR alone. Or a lens that, for example, is shifting posteriorly, tilting posteriorly, that to me is a clue that they need something that needs to be sutured, and I think a CTS is best designed for that. So those are some of the parameters I use to select the CTS in addition to whatever other intercapsular device I'm gonna use. So I'm fortunate to have access to the Gore-Tex, the CV8 needle on the 7.0 suture. And I find this to be the most robust suture. You know, I think suture breakage is one of the Achilles heel potentially of any kind of sutured element. And the Gore-Tex to me and others have shown to have the longest durability. I realize it isn't always an easy access for folks. Uh, some of us have used 9.0 proline. We have found 9.0 proline, however, can sometimes break. So that's one of a one little caution there. Now what others have done now, they've gone to use more like flange suture techniques. Techniques, for example, that we can use to melt the end of, uh, for example, the 5.0 or 6.0 polypropylene suture, which is, more, which is larger, and place it in a similar way that we do Yamani, for example, with the flanged approach. So the flanged approach also is becoming more popular for those that don't have a Gore-Tex suture. Every week in the OR, we have cases that we need a CTS for. Uh, we have a lot of trauma, a lot of pseudo a lot of late onset in the bag dislocations, and congenital zonulopathies. So I have cases recently I've done of three-year-old, for example, with Marfans, with a lens that was, you know, three quarters of the way half across their pupil. And I was able to refixate the uh, bag using one CTS in that case with a CTR in the bag. I often do combine a CTS with a CTR. A CTS provides more localized support and a CTR provides circumferential support. In that case, one device was enough. And in the bag placement of an IOL was able to be achieved uh, without retracting me without any other post segment complications. So, you know, those Marfan's cases all the way up to a nine-year-old with affiliation who has profound zonulopathy with generalized weakness where I'm putting two CTSs in, you know, typically 100 degrees apart, with a CTR in the bag, you know, and I'm a big fan of really keeping the capsular bag. <clears throat> There's so many approaches that we can use to remove the capsular bag. You use you direct IOL fixation to the sclera like Yamani or AC IOLs, but a lot has to be said by preserving the capsular bag. <clears throat> Physiologic place for the lens, maintaining the entry segment and posterior segment border, reduce vitrectomy, I think are all certain benefits. So I think those are some of the benefits. Uh, I'm a big fan of keeping that, and the CTS has allowed us to do that. Can I have a couple more comments? Yeah. So a couple more surgical pearls. You know, CTS is designed, of course, for scleral fixation. We talked about that. But it's also a very helpful, you know, device for placement during surgery. So for example, I need to have broad support. We have options of using iris hook on the rex's edge or a captured capsular retractor that's useful as well. But the CTS is quite effective, actually, with the use of an iris hook through the eyelet, supported through a limbal incision, to basically suspend the capsular bag with the CTS. The CTS, remember, has a large, about 120 degrees broad area of contact with the capsular equator. And that provides good expansion of the capsular bag during the FACO, holding the capsular bag in place. So it's a very useful retractor. Once the catheter has been removed, then we can basically remove the, remove the iris hook, pass the sutures through the CTS, and we have good fixation. Another point, there's two sizes, a 60 and a 6E. Originally based on capsular sizing, we went with a 10 millimeter basically diameter, which is larger, the 6E. I found that a 6D, which is 9.5 millimeters, a bit easier to place in, easier to tuck in the leading and the trailing uh, eyelet, and is sufficiently large and supportive to support a large area of zonular dialysis. So for me, the 6D, the 9.5 millimeter diameter is the one I go to, it's quite versatile, and uh, it applies in the vast majority of our cases.